there are four catabolic process, right? So one is glycogenolysis controlled by a key enzyme called as glycogen phosphorylase. And we have another catabolic pathway called as gluconeogenesis, which is controlled by three key enzymes, pyruvate carboxylase, and of course, PEPCK, but that is not under strong hormonal control. Second one is fructose 1,6-bisphosphorase and third is glucose 6-phosphorase. Third is lipolysis in the adipose tissue, controlled by a key enzyme called as hormone sensitive lipase. And finally, we have ketogenesis. Number of enzymes are there which are under hormonal control here. But simple understanding is whenever lipolysis is shut down, you are not going to result in ketone body production. Whenever lipolysis is going to increase, you are going to result in ketone body formation. As per understanding, that's a very simple way to put things. And insulin is like a kind of a kingpin. So why I'm going to call this a kingpin? Because to counteract the effects of this one agent called insulin, you have four counter-regulatory hormones. Glucagon, epinephrine, cortisol, growth hormone. Everything is trying to act as counter-regulation to insulin effects. That's why insulin is a kind of a kingpin. That's why in the textbooks, often they will mention something called as insulin-glucagon ratio. But glucagon, I would say, is no match for insulin because even at a secretion level, you look at like glucagon is going to stimulate insulin release, whereas insulin is going to suppress glucagon release. There also insulin is going to win. But that is the reason why it's always insulin versus counter-regulatory hormones, not just glucagon. Even though textbooks use this notion of insulin-glucagon ratio to make a better understanding of undergraduate students. So what insulin does, it's the only molecule known so far that can reduce the blood glucose levels plus it's going to shut down all the catabolic process. So what glucagon is going to do? Glucagon is going to accelerate all the catabolic pathways except the lipolysis. And uh, epinephrine is going to accelerate all the catabolic process except gluconeogenesis. Cortisol is going to accelerate gluconeogenesis and growth hormone is going to accelerate lipolysis. This is something that's very important for exams. So in a nutshell, I can say insulin glucagon ratio, how it's important. If the ratio is going to be high, the body's metabolism will shift towards more anabolic processes. So I can say you're going to reduce the catabolic pathways. Suppose if the ratio is low, which means the counter-regulatory hormones are high, glucagon is high, you're going to reduce the anabolic pathways and you're going to increase the activity of catabolic processes. So thereby, if the insulin glucagon ratio is low, then glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, ketogenesis, everything will be accelerated. The importance of this, we will understand in the complication section where we will be talking about diabetic ketosis. Mm -hmm.